Thank you for joining us for this news conference about persistent problems with mold, structural damage, termites, rats, and other maintenance difficulties at Holualoa Elementary School on Hawaii Island. The biggest problem throughout the Holualoa Elementary campus is mold. Teachers say mold like this appears on the walls and the ceilings of many classrooms, especially when the school is closed for a week or more during school breaks. While custodians do their best to clean the mold, teachers say it persists all over. From the ceiling of the school office, to the closet doors inside classrooms, and the covered walkways around campus. Students haven't been able to use the library since late last year because a first grade class had to temporarily relocate into the library due to persistent mold problems in their classroom. Teachers say in November, the principal asked for professional cleaning of the classrooms to help eradicate mold. But months later, it's still unclear when that will happen. Teachers say several staff tested positive for mold in their lungs and doctors have told them not to return to school into offices and classrooms affected by mold. Teachers report students have high absentee rates because of respiratory problems. The carpeting in some classrooms is many years old, stained, and in poor condition. You can see portions are held together with duct tape. The state plans to remove these old carpets, which likely are a breeding place for mold underneath. And there are concerns that tearing out the carpets might expose hazardous asbestos in some of these old buildings. The state told teachers it plans to remove carpeting and repaint classrooms affected by mold, but the renovations will continue through the spring and summer breaks, meaning a fix is months away at best. They have been told that the carpets would be removed for the last three years, but they're still in place. The school just received these humidifiers on February 9th for every classroom. Staff were instructed to close the windows every night, turn on the dehumidifiers, and then empty them out every morning before school. There are many other problems, like this paint containing lead that's peeling off the ceiling of a third grade classroom. So the students and teacher here relocated to a stage in the cafeteria for weeks, and more recently moved into a computer lab. The largest student public restroom on campus was closed in January over concerns about its structural integrity. Look at the exposed, rusted rebar in the outside corner of the building with cracked, rotted concrete. Recently, state structural engineers inspected the building and deemed it safe to reopen, but longer-term repairs are still needed. Parents and faculty still feel the restroom is unsafe for use. Termite damage is pervasive throughout the older buildings on campus, and that may contribute to potential problems with buildings' foundations. Some supports to buildings have appeared to move off their pylons, a problem that may be exacerbated by volcanic earthquakes on the Kona side of Hawaii Island. Rats are also a problem here. Traps killed two rats in a classroom just a few weeks ago. Educators have found rat droppings on classroom materials, and the rats have chewed right through some books and other publications. Staff say rats crawl up and down this tubing in the English learner's classroom through a hole in the ceiling. They also chewed their way through fiber cable wires last month, knocking out the internet and phone service on campus. And rats chewed up a pair of a teacher's sandals left overnight in a classroom, leaving them ravaged. Then there's this aging road that runs right through campus. Elementary students have to cross every day to go to the restroom the cafeteria or two playgrounds, putting them at risk of getting hit by a vehicle. From the air, you can see how the problem evolved. The original school was built on the right side of the road, but the campus expanded over the years and numerous portable classrooms were constructed on the left side of the road. Loa Elementary is one of the oldest schools in the state, and we should be taking better care of it because it's falling apart putting students and educators at risk of illness and injury. HSTA's primary goal here is to obtain clarity from the state. We want a plan to address the situation, including, at the very least, an outline of which repair, maintenance, and other projects will be completed and when. We want to reiterate that the principal has been strongly advocating for improvements at the school, and the custodial staff has done its best to keep things clean. 
people started getting very sick in my room. Um, teachers that came for lunch, um, one went to the hospital for two weeks. And this was 2002. Um, I had bron chronic bronchitis, sinusitis. So I filed a grievance against for unsafe working conditions. And um, they brought in a professional mold comp company back in 2002, um, eradicated the mold. And then a state inspector came and deemed that room uninhabitable. And that was way back then. Um, and I got moved. My next office was in the new building down by the cafeteria. And that's the one that you saw, um, the rat infested one. And um, the, the EL learners are in now. And that's when um, the rats would crawl up and down the pipes in the side. I'd be on Zoom meetings during COVID and watch them crawling up and down. Uh, custodial staff caught three with regular traps. I got my own electric trap, brought it in, caught three, and they make the ones you saw in the video tiny. They were enormous, and, and it's still there. The, they called uh, vector control. They did everything they could, and they never filled the hole. And it's the hole still there, and the rats still crawl up and down. And to me, it's just unacceptable. We got the babies here. We're on the big island. They grew up in Vogue. They're already compromised. There are so many of them are out on respiratory illnesses. Staff started getting sick. It's unacceptable. Something needs to be done. And um, I'm not going anywhere until it does. Most recently, due to an invasive mold condition in my classroom, my students and I were displaced to the school library. You saw pictures in the video um, with very few supplies. And Sadly, the library has even higher mold counts than in my former classroom. And I know this firsthand because I have paid out of my own pocket for mold testing. We have students who have allergies. We have students who have asthma and they are affected and they are impacted on a daily basis. Our keiki are still growing. We don't know the long-term effect on their health. And while maybe some people at the DOE or other places are willing to bargain with our students' health, I am not. It is a non-negotiable for me. Um, I can speak from a personal standpoint that um, my own health has been severely impacted over the past six months. I've been in and out on medical leave. I am not someone who suffers from allergies, nor do I have underlying health conditions as, as Kaz and Mr. Big Nami have repeatedly um, stated as fact. Yet here I am and mold is attacking my system. Friday was my last day on campus for a while. Um, it's for an extended time. I'm not sure when I'll be back and I've missed a lot of school and that, that leaves me not teaching our keiki. That leaves them in other people's hands. And while we have great subs on campus, this, this is my profession and I do what I do for our keiki. There was mold all over the walls. There was mold in the ceiling. You walk in and you just smell a stench of mold. I went next door to the classroom next door. It didn't have any carpet in it and it was a beautiful breath of fresh air. Immediately, I had to make a decision and request a change because they they are re refusing to begin any type of cleaning in the classroom. I had to make a decision to move my own child out of what should have been a his last year at Hololoa, the entire you know year with his own um, class. But I made the, the change that it is in his best interest to have a less lesser mold. It, um, issue in his classroom. And so that's his new placement is the computer lab. In my interactions with the DOE, um, I've found that it lacked transparency. There was a lack of a sense of urgency. And I did not feel that caring connection that I want to feel when I'm talking to someone who is in a position of power, who can make choices about the health and safety of students and staff. I did not get that. The, the, the short-term solution is was professional cleaning uh, professional cleaning repainting yanking the carpets putting tile down um where, where that's at for the last three months is dickering on who's going to do it dickering on what's coming first w what department's responsible for it who's going to do it when um our school has offered you know we'd hire the professional cleaning company you know that if this has been ongoing nothing it's going to up the ranks the long-term solution this we need a new school and we've known that Forever. I'm on my 15th principle. We have three master plans in the books that have never been funded by the legislature. Three different ones. The last one is a, get a two story building, cement. They've never been funded. So, the, and even um, Assistant Superintendent Tanaka, when he came, you know, it was like, you know what? I'll get trailers, uh, temporary housing while we clean these buildings. Then we talk more to him and he's like, uh, we just probably need new buildings. And that was like, and he was, but it's going to take a lot to do that. Well, we've been trying now for 30 years. Just. <laughs> 